Okay. Uh, today, uh, our guest in Oppo Stories from the MBA is uh, Josh Powell, uh, two times uh, MBA um, uh, champion, championship. Um, I would like to start with, uh, maybe not with your beginning with the MBA, but uh, something which was before. Uh, I would like to ask you how tough for you was to be undrafted in 2003 NBA draft. How do you rem remember this? Yeah, I mean, it was, um, it was, it was very tough. And, you know, I was disappointed, especially at 19, 20 years old, um, because obviously your dream is to walk across the stage and have your suit on and put the hat on and shake a hand. Um, but it motivated me and it drove me even more so. Um, it was a very humbling experience because I knew that I had a very strong um, uh, draft camp and a um, uh, very strong showing in Chicago. Um, I did a really, really well in all of my workouts, maybe except one kind of ran out of gas. Um, so I felt strong and I felt confident, you know, and I, I remember having a, a watch party and uh you know, my, my, my family and my friends were there and, you know, I, I ultimately was let down because it didn't go the way that I planned for it to go. But, um, you know, thank God I had a good support group and they, they were just like, you know, just keep your head up. Everything will work itself out. So just stay, just stay positive. And, and I was glad that, you know, my agent uh, put, a, put a plan together. He talked to me and, and just calmed me down and just told me it's going to be okay. We're going to figure this thing out. And uh, after two years, uh, as you said, you were confident, uh, gain experience in different leagues around the world, because you played in Russia and Italy, and then again in the uh, USA, but not in NBA, but WBA. And then you signed your first contract in the NBA with uh, Dallas Mavericks. And uh, how did you remember Dirk Nowitzki? Because it, it was his team. How do you remember him as a teammate and also a leader? Uh, Dirk, Dirk was amazing. Um, I just think that his work ethic, you know, um, what he put into the game night in and night out. Um, I had the chance to uh, work out with him many times and, and he was one of those people who always talked to me and helped me throughout uh, the different things, um, the different transitions, you know, from preseason to uh, actual season starting and then as we got through the middle and then towards the end um, and he just walked me through step by step certain things he helped me out on on both ends of the floor um, obviously I picked up a lot of things from him offensively as well as some of his workout ways and I mean he's just a fun guy really good good guy great teammate so it, it was great to to start off um, having a legend like that, you know, Steve Nash, also Don Nelson coach and um, other, other buddies of mine like Josh Howard and Marquise Daniels and Jerry Stackhouse. And I mean, it was just a team loaded full of veterans and guys that play the game really well at a high level. And to be able to get that knowledge and that tutelage coming out was very, very good start for me. And, and it was also uh... I guess amazing for you that it was your first rookie season in the NBA and you played in NBA Finals. Uh, you won two first games, but then uh, Miami hit with Dwayne Wade and Shaquille O'Neal uh, won another four games. Uh, three games were really close, uh, to be honest. And how do you remember that uh, series? I felt like it slipped right through our hands. Um... It was just crazy because I felt we had the better team. I think we 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 felt we had the better team, and we knew we had the better team, but it just didn't work out that way. You know, we we had a a rough game three, and it's like we couldn't recover from being up fifteen and losing that game the way that we did. It just the ship sank quickly. Um, but that that was a great experience, you know what I mean? And and obviously you want to win being in the, in that in those moments, but I felt like those times they build character. And obviously Dallas went on to get their first ring years after. And mm -hmm. I went on to get two more rings, but, you know, had the opportunity to get two more rings after. So uh, definitely grateful for that experience. 
And uh, how this experience from uh, playing in the NBA Finals help you later when you played with Lakers uh, in NBA Finals? Um, because because you understand the moments, you understand the, the pressure, you understand how important um, each possession is on offense and defense um, and, and staying with it. You know, guys that believe in each other, like the more you, the further along you get um, in the playoffs, you know, it, it stops becoming the X and O thing. It starts becoming about who wants it more and, you know, who's going to get that big stop or who's going to make the right play and, and do the, you know, the IQ type things. Um, so just understanding what that looks like and then figuring out how can I be a help, um, whether I'm either in the game or not in the game and just staying locked in and making sure that everybody, you know, we all stay locked in. Uh, you mentioned about coach uh, Nelson, and uh, I must say that uh, many of my uh, the players with whom I have got interviews uh, are uh, former uh, Don Nelson's players. And how do you remember him as, as a coach? How he helped you in uh, your further NBA career? Well, he, he, helped, he helped me from the standpoint of, um, learn, I mean, just, I think offensively, like putting me in positions that I had never kind of like really been in, you know, um, defensively trusted me enough to play and guard different positions. Um, but he's a he's a small ball kind of coach anyway. Mm -hmm. For me, I guess I'm kind of at that range. Uh, <laughs> but you know, he's it's just a fun style of play. You know, getting up, getting down. Um, and I know when Avery took over, um, played with Avery Johnson too, because uh, that's who that's who our coach was when we we lost in the finals. Um, but he just added more of that defensive mind to that to that team. So um, just being able to have both and, and just understanding the game a lot more differently um, because he had his ways of doing things. So. Mm -hmm. And next season, uh, and with two teams, um, Indiana Pacers and Golden State Warriors. And from player perspective, uh, how difficult is to hear that you were traded and, and uh, how difficult is to organize new life in new city? I think it's very difficult, especially like the way that I found out because I was watching TV and I found out like with my name going across the clicker. Oh. <laughs> um, but, but I think when you understand it's a part of the business, you know, you just got to stay positive and keep pushing. I mean, I played overseas as well. And, you know, for the most part, guys are on new teams pretty much every year. So for me, it was like, all right, you just pick up and you just head to the next city and do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Next season, you played uh, in Clippers. Mm, and uh, when we look at the stats, which of course uh, doesn't show the, the, the whole uh, the whole player and his role for the team and so on, mm, but you've got a solid 5.5 points and 5.2 rebounds per game. And what did, uh, what did change uh, in your game during uh, this season? I think this, this, I had the chance to play. I'm, I'm grateful for the Clippers because that's really the first team where I got a chance to really showcase what I could do. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people don't realize that we, we, we had so many injuries. We were down to like seven, eight players. So I was able to start the last, I was able to start the last um, three months of the season. I, I think I averaged like 30 minutes or so per mm -hmm. game. And, um, that's what I was able to show. Like, if I'm out on the floor, I'm going to make some things happen. And I think that my 
average as a starter was like around 11 and 8 rebounds or something like that. Yeah, we've got some um, six uh, double doubles in this season. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was, like, you know, <laughs> like showing that I could score, showing obviously that I can defend, I could rebound, do all those things. So um, just having a chance to, again, be on the court and gain that experience, you know what I mean? Just being a lot more comfortable with just playing. So that was the big thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, next season, you, you still – uh stay in LA but this time uh you signed a contract with Lakers and how do you feel what uh, what helped you to to sign with them uh was it this experience from the NBA finals with Dallas Mavericks was it the solid uh, uh season with the Clippers or maybe the other factors with the with the Lakers what well, I missed Lakers. some of it was Yes. What were some of the factors winning it? Yes. Why Lakers decided to sign you? Do you got some uh, meetings with the Oh, why? Mm -hmm. oh, why? Oh, Ronnie, Ronnie Terrioff actually was on the team the year that they lost to Boston. And then he, he signed like a three-year deal with Golden State. So that opened up a spot. And mm -hmm. I was actually a free agent. I had a three-year deal with the Clippers. They released me. And uh, my agent made the call. So I actually flew in. Uh, I took like a 6 a.m. flight, got in at 9. I didn't eat nothing and went straight in for the workout and got the job. Signed a two-year deal. And so where you, did, you, uh, did you remember, how do you remember the, uh, the opportunity to play with Kobe Bryant? Were you afraid of being with Black Mamba because he was known as a player who got really, really hard uh, work ethic and to, when I, for example, read uh, the Mamba mentality, uh, I saw that uh, it was crazy, but now I understand why he was at this level when he was. No, I think for me, that's, that's, that's something that we had in common because I, I worked my ass off. Like that was one thing that I, a lot of, my teammates and coaches would say is that I was a hard worker and I was very professional and I was one of those guys that are, that were willing to learn and willing to get better. And I think that's why I got the respect that I got from him and, and my other teammates um, and, and the coaching staff, because I mean, I came in from the jump just ready to get better. And that's one thing about Kobe is he respects guys that are, that are like that. You know what I mean? That, that, you know, not only because of their skill level, but they, they want to get better. They're, they're not, they're not scared or, you know, willing to do whatever on behalf of the team. And I knew my role. I knew, you know, what I needed to do whenever I was on the court or in practice or anything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you remember also Kobe? Because, uh, when you came to uh, to Los Angeles Lakers, it was also different uh, part of Kobe Bryant's career. Not uh, focus on being the alpha dog on the court, but focus more on being a teammate. Uh, did you feel that he really cared about you as a team and uh, for the individual players? I mean, he's still an alpha. That, that's who he is. <laughs> think that he was just on a different part of his career. Um, but he still was who he was. Like, not, none of that changed. Um, even from what I heard, but it's like playing with him and actually being around him for two years, it, it, it lets you understand why he was the way that he was either at number eight or number 24. What did you learn from... Phil Jackson, what did Phil learn you as a player? I think that one of the biggest things is managing egos. I think he's the best coach I've ever seen or known to do that. Um, his leadership, you know, how he was able to challenge and push people and bring out the best of them. Like he was just masterful. Like he just had a master mind on how to, um, push guys to the level that they need to be at. You won two NBA championships. And right. uh, which, 
which title tastes better for you? This from 2009 or 2010? I would say the first because it's just like finally becoming a champion. I think the second one for the organization because they had the chance to redeem themselves from their rival. Mm -hmm. So you, I, 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 I don't think anybody could feel what Derek Fisher and Kobe Bryant felt because they, they're obviously, they spent the most time on the Lakers than, than most of us. Um, but I definitely understood what that meant for the organization. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, why did you decide to, because you said that you've got a two year uh, contract, uh, was there opportunity to stay in the Lakers or you decided to go to Hawks, to Atlanta Hawks for another experience? They decided to go younger, uh, from my understanding. They wanted to move on. So I can't do nothing but respect how they felt. I mean, we told them we wanted to be there. You know what I mean? I, I, I would have preferred to remain there. Like, that was my first time being in the city. Like, I had been in L.A. for three years at that point. But that was my first time, like it felt like home, like just being there, being a part of the purple and gold. They decided to move in another direction. So um, I had three or four teams that wanted, wanted me to play with their organizations. I chose to go home because I wanted to, like for me, that was a big accomplishment to be able to play in the city that you're from. So that's mm -hmm. why I chose for the Hawks. When you look at uh, your NBA career, um, which uh, player were toughest to guard from your perspective? Um, I would say Al Jefferson was one because he was like the first, second, and third option. Like they were always trying to find ways to get him the ball. So you never stop working. And Yao Ming. I mean, I'm 6'9", he's 7'6", <laughs> and he's skilled. Um, but I've also had to guard LeBron. I've had to guard, you know, Melo at times. I had to guard Ron Artest. Um, I've had to guard a lot of different guys in different positions. So those are some of the people that come to mind as I think, you know, throughout, throughout those times. And uh, after your... Um journey with, with the NBA, you also traveled uh, around the world and played in, in, in different continents, different leagues. And which league uh, besides NBA was the best from your point of view? Uh, it's, it's EuroLeague for sure, you know that. <laughs> Easily. Um, I mean, it's just, a, it's just a, a talented, you know, there's a lot of talent um, internationally. There's a lot of talent, um, but it's just so competitive. You know, every game matters because, you know, you're playing first round, second round, uh, third round, final four. Like, so it's like everything matters. So it's like nothing but pressure throughout the whole season. So I loved it. I thought it was fun. The atmosphere is great. Um, excuse me, I think um, they have the best atmosphere that I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. Nothing compares to that. And, um, and um, yeah, I, I, I want to I go back, you know, even now as a former player just to watch and be a part of those atmospheres. I guess that when you play in the in the Greece and in Olympiakos, uh, uh, and you felt how is it to be uh, on the court when the crowds of these uh, passionate and energetic fans uh, looking at you? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> to the NBA, it's, it's totally different, different world. It's totally different. That's why I try to explain to people because that's so much more personal. Like NBA, they're not letting people run and jump on courts, you know, unless you win the finals. But even then, it's like family. You got to have a band, you know. In Europe, that ain't happening. If they wanted to mob the court, they gonna mob it. Like, you know, you, you got 
bombs going off, you got flare guns being shot, you got chants going on, people painting their body. I mean, it's just the best atmosphere ever. Um, so now you are playing in big, big free league. Um, of course, this season was delayed because of COVID-19. You are co-captain of uh, Killers team. What yes. the most about the league and opportunity to play uh, with the former NBA players? I mean, I think it's great. It's a it's a family environment. You know, it, it feels like you're on tour in a sense because you're traveling city to city with all the teams. Um, but I think it's fun. It's very competitive. Guys are obviously in shape. They can still play. Um, they're competing and, and busting their asses night in and night out. Um, there's a lot of uh, trash talk um, and, you know, very, very physical league. Um, I just think it's a good brand of basketball, especially during the summertime to give, you know, basketball fans something to, to watch or support. Um, and it's, a, it's like a family environment because people get to, you know, walk around the, the arenas and take pictures and, and have conversations with everybody. It's, it's not as, um, I don't want to say uptight because I know that uh, the arenas, like from the NBA standpoint, is you know they're doing everything to protect players and people from you know and I, like I get that, mm -hmm. uh, but it's 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 a lot more relaxed. I guess is a better way to say how the big three you know experience kind of is. Season you played in uh, big three finals, but of course this was Joe Johnson season. He was amazing. Yeah. I am a set. What are aspirations for the next season? Getting a big three finals? I think, I, of course. I mean, if, if you don't, if you don't aim high, then what, what are you doing it for? You know what I'm saying? Like the goal is to win a title, and um, you know that's that's what I'm sure we plan on doing. Obviously, we have to see what's going on with the season. We have to see what's going on with the team, um, and just be just be able to go from there. But I look forward to it. I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. The last question, uh, do you have your fingers crossed for your coach, Charles Oakley, in the Dancing with the Star? I was <laughs> rooting for Oak. I was rooting for Oak. And oh, uh, Oak. I, didn't know, I didn't know Oak was as graceful as he was on them toes. <laughs> You know, and how it looks, uh, because I see only some uh, some pictures from, from this, uh, from Desi from, with the stars, and did he got a really big chance for win this, um, yeah, this series? That's a good okay. question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> But he's still in the game. I, th I thought I thought he got released. I thought. Okay. Yeah, I thought he got released. So. So I need to update my info from this. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I thought you know he got the, his his team got disqualified. So. Okay, uh, Josh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk. It, it was uh, really nice to talk about the NBA, about the Greece, and, and the, the the other uh, information from from your. Uh, past and present uh, basketball career. Thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, have a nice afternoon. Thank you, man. I really appreciate you. Anytime, let me know if we can do this again. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon. Goodbye.